Welcome to chapter 13, the third and final of the promotion chapters. Again, another short chapter and short slide deck because it's a busy period. And the many-to-many -many communications, the online communications, there are a few things that are different and interesting about online and interactive communication. But a lot of the principles that we covered in chapter 11 and a lot of the theoretical frameworks are still the same. So, we're still at the communicate value stage, and when we bring the internet into play, what we're also doing is that we're creating the environment that allows us to address the client, the customer, and our stakeholders, the society at large. So quite often with interactive marketing, what you're seeing is that you have a customer base, and you also have a stakeholder group. And anyone can interact with you. Anyone can post your Facebook page. Anyone can message you on Twitter. So you've got a cohort of potential non-consumers, people who aren't going to buy your product, but who are stakeholders in the operation of your organization, and they will use the interactive medium to, well, engage with you. So when we talk about internet new media, it's kind of hard to keep calling it new media when it's nearly 20 years old, but that's the current uh, phraseology for it. We're looking at both classic internet sites uh, and the web 2.0. There hasn't been a web 3.0 release yet. We're still waiting to see what happens next. Web 1 was very static. Web 2 was very much interpersonal. Web 3 could be the web of machines, could be where automated updating and automated posting and profiling becomes a thing. But for you, for here, what you're looking at for this particular chapter, with all forms of social media, you need to be thinking about it both as a promotional channel and a distribution channel. And because we've covered services, most online activities is some form of service or it may also be the distribution of an idea. So we deal a lot with augmented services and online service delivery and online product delivery also comes with the added bonus of being intangible. So you have a lot of services marketing theory that's applying to objects that we tend to think of or describe as physical goods. When we think about MP3s, we think about movie files, we tend to still feel that they are objects and therefore they have characteristics and traits, yet they are very intangible and they have all the service characteristics. So that's one of the things about the new media is it is an area where you need to be applying and adapting thinking. So in terms of internet marketing, there's a couple of things I just want to raise here is some of the language of internet marketing is kind of embarrassing. Uh, Buzz marketing, yeah. Um, look, there's some terminology in the chapter that's uh, a little antiquated. Uh, at least they didn't say the words elite, cyber, or dude, which I just did, so I'm sorry. But the main thing with internet marketing, what you're looking at here is, if you think about the internet as an advertising platform, then you are looking for targeting, segmentation, keyword identification, and interaction based on the level to which you can customize and personalize. Now, the problem with internet marketing is if you're a really good internet marketer and you have these finely customized, finely tuned, individualized marketing campaigns, you're also a creepy stalker and people don't like you. So there's a level to which your market research skills can just be blunt instruments and hammer on the side of a Facebook advertising campaign and people will like you more than if you're really accurate and really precise. The internet environment, despite 20 years of it being pretty much a public sphere, still feels like the personal space. It still feels like the personal interaction. So an internet marketer has the prospect of interrupting private conversations or butting in in places where people think of themselves as being in private or where they're not really expecting a sales pitch in a crowd. So you're having a conversation with friends waiting outside the lecture theater for the class to start and suddenly a sales person rolls in and starts pitching you a product and you're thinking what is going on here and why is this happening that's pretty much the pre-roll on most websites when you've gone and clicked a link and suddenly there's an advert so you got to watch this one you got to really look at uh, it's evolving it's still an evolving area 
a lot of the social norms are still there. Um, the internet started as a non-profit and non-commercial entity, so some of that dislike of commercialization is still present. Now, what's the pros to working with the internet and the online media? I just mentioned the cons to individualization, but the pro is you can, and we're seeing this happen, is the creation of the internet bubbles. Now, this is a con because as your as the service providers basically start reading your profile through the cookies that they're tracking on you, your Google searches, because if you're logged into Google, your search history builds up a history. If you're interacting with Google through Facebook, there's a whole set of ways in which customization is being created to try and give you a better experience. But in essence, it's creating a little pocket bubble where you're not seeing the same Google search results as somebody who's come from a different bubble. So that individualization is problematic and not always the most effective. Targeting is interesting because you can start doing big data and real-time big data. If you look at Amazon, Amazon will keep recommending you things of, based on this, you should try that. And even things like uh, if you go to Woolworths and use the online shopping, the online shopping cart will have pulled down your data from your everyday rewards card and will start recommending you products for your virtual shopping carts that you would normally put in your physical shopping cart. And that's individualization, interactivity, and targeting done well. When it becomes an assistance and a bonus, where I'm able to pull up the last series of shopping lists I've made, both in person, in a store, and online, and I'm able to draw on that to make my new purchase decisions, that's providing me with my own behavioral tracking. And it's providing me with an advantage of, hey, it was that product I bought a couple of weeks ago I really liked. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll go check my receipts. I'll go check my online orders, and then I'll be able to reorder it. The other elements to the new media, there's a lot of talk about cost effectiveness. It's a little bit misleading. A lot of the calculations on cost effectiveness and e-marketing don't count HR costs and don't count staff time. Online is very close to personal selling in many respects because you are people at a keyboard dealing with other people at a keyboard. So there's actually some, at some points, it's more expensive and more cost-centric to be online and engaging than it is to just run uh, a classic advertising campaign. And the last part of the new media advantage is actually that customization element not just in terms of what we can do as marketers, but in terms of what we can allow the customer to do. Where we've got the capacity to make minor alterations, even something as simple as the delivery notice or gift wrapping or small added tweaks that we can add to a product that improves its performance and it makes life better for the consumer. And if we improve the consumer's, for, well, improve life of the consumer, we could triggering the relative advantage. And this is the thing that e-marketing took about 15 years to really kick into gear was triggering, triggering its relative advantage over going out to a store and physically interacting with merchandise. All right, a couple of key terms that we're just going to uh, wave on the way over on the way past. Uh, interactive responses. First order response is sales. Click a link, follow that link, Put the product in the shopping cart, check out, buy, ship. It's your first order response. Second order response is signing up for emails, registering for a site, joining here, expressing interest, and going into the system as an interested customer. But from a marketer's perspective, that's still slightly less useful than actually selling you the product. First order response is closing the sale. Second order response is saying, come back and sell it to me again later. Database marketing, again, what we're seeing here is a return to a couple of the components we've seen raised earlier, again, in market research. But also what you're looking at here is creating and using the data that you're able to pick up on your customers, either voluntarily. Quite often, people will hand over enormous amounts of information on a registration if they see value in the site. But then also to start tuning up here, to send special offers. Now, 
Occasionally, it feels a little odd and a little weird that um, Woolworths would send me a an email just for me about a product that, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I was um, one of the 10 people on the planet buying it. it. Just felt like that. So it can occasionally weird out your customer, but if you're looking at it from the point of view of being able to alert customers to, hey, you expressed an interest in product X, it's on sale this week, are you still interested? Then you're being helpful. And also, of here is product X, it's very similar to product Y, which you bought previously. Would you like to have a look at it, or would you like to recommend it to a friend? Again, being useful. Uh, again, with database marketing, one of the key things here is that you want to be balancing between the creepiness of profiling and the usefulness of predictive capacities, data mining, and also having a message. If you think about database marketing is going to be one of the ultimate forms of experimental design. You have a hypothesis, which basically is we can sell more products, and you can test that hypothesis through customized and targeted messages to each individual customer. Closing up, I do want to mention M-Commerce. Uh, I'm an old academic. I've been in the game for a while. One of my peers, when we were first starting out in the business, was really excited about M-Commerce because that was what he saw as the future. We were going to buy things by SMS. We were going to buy things with our, you know, our phones back in the day were not as good as the legendary Nokia 3, 310. We had M-Commerce was a terrible platform. It was a very ineffective platform. M-Commerce has almost been perfectly superseded by the smartphone, and the smartphone's ability to use the internet beats the M-Commerce platform. So it's here as a sort of history. It should be fading out and gone relatively soon. All right, the last key point that I want to raise your attention to. Again, I remind you that we have an advertising subject that we, goes for a semester. In that advertising subject, one of the major assessment tasks you may face would be the creation of a promotional plan. So here's the heads up. This is what a promotional plan looks like. It's worth you having a look at, read over. But I want you to be thinking about this as a marketer, not just about as an advertiser. Look at those first three steps. Identify the target audience. So to do that, you've got to go back to segmentation. Segmentation, targeting, positioning. But for your segmentation, targeting, positioning to be useful, you need a marketing strategy. So that identification of target audiences, same audience, new audience. That is a critical part which draws on the rest of the marketing and draws the whole of the advertising component together with the rest of the mix and the rest of the marketing strategy. Establishing your communication objectives. Objectives are going to be working to similar platforms of the specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timetabled. So your smart objectives apply here. Once you've built that communication objective, if you're feeling like you're on familiar turf, that what you're about to do here is you're basically about to do a micro marketing plan just for one specific part of the marketing mix. And again, there are two, there's one step missing off here. We talk about this in terms of design the promotion mix. Step 4A is implement the promotion mix. Step 5 is evaluate the effectiveness. So again, we see very much set a plan, establish a target audience, establish a set of objectives, deliver on those objectives, and evaluate the effectiveness of what you attempted to deliver against what you set out to do. All right, this is one of the fast ones again because it's a crowded week and there's a lot of content and this sort of stuff, the e-marketing stuff, we used to have a subject on it here, um, other places, it started to roll in just as a general part of marketing rather than being a specialized subset. But as always, if you need me, the irony of telling you if you need me in the e-marketing slide deck is contact me on Twitter, hit me up on Form Spring, send me an email or come see me face to face. And as always, if you need me, at Stephen Dan on Twitter or Stephen.Dan at anu.edu.au for the longer email. And that's the chapter.